Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. When Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. I wish to speak to you in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. What a difference a week makes. Last week, if you were here, and if you weren't here, I'm going to recap it, so don't worry. Last week, we had Peter as a shining example of understanding who Jesus is. He makes his great confession, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus does some name calling and some praising of Peter. He says, you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. You're blessed, you're the rock. Jesus tosses him the keys to the kingdom. This week, Jesus has some other names to call Peter. He's gone from being the rock to being the stumbling block. Jesus really pulls out the ultimate. He calls him Satan of all things. The difference between last week and this week seems to hinge on Peter's awareness because Jesus is teaching it that Jesus is going to suffer and die. Now Jesus says, I am going to suffer, be killed, and then be raised. But Peter doesn't seem to hear that last part about being raised. He just hears the suffering and death part. And I think that is why in his fear, he says, God forbid it. You remember, Peter is really good at denying things. And I think what he wants to deny here is that following Jesus is going to require walking alongside in solidarity with suffering and death. And you know what? I think Peter is just saying what everyone else is thinking. We all 
we're honest, have one of our primary fears in life being the fear of death. And Jesus is simply saying, there's more. This journey with God is a great mystery. It's a paradox. There's more. Follow me. So this week, as I've been thinking about fear of death, my own and everyone else's, Peter's, and the invitation and the good news today that Jesus is inviting us to follow him on a hard but beautiful path. I've been thinking about the movie, Barbie. <laughs> so when I first started thinking about this in relationship to the good news of Jesus Christ, I thought, oh no, 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 no. But then I remembered that a few weeks ago, Megan told us that she has been watching The Bachelor for over 15 years, and she spent a lot of her sermon talking about The Bachelor. So, you know, Barbie, what's next? So the well, first thing I'm going to tell you is that I've seen Barbie in the theater twice. I can only say that about one other movie in my life. But I saw Barbie twice because the first time I thought it was really a great film, but it stuck with me and I had questions. And there was one more part that I really wanted to see again and that was the monologue by America Rivera on what it is to be a woman. I'd read it online, but to listen to her was really potent and I wanted to do that again. And the other thing was the film that has one theme which is kind of a, a look at patriarchy with a light hand but I had a lot of questions about Ken. Yeah, I mean, we laugh, but honestly, I wanted to see and remember and think about how hard the patriarchy is for Ken. So I'm gonna tell you, you, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, maybe you love Barbie, maybe you hate Barbie, maybe you're completely indifferent and you think this is silly, but I'm going to tell you that I saw the film the first time with uh, two other priests and we all thought that it was an important film and the second time I saw it with my daughter. And I still think it's an important film. The setting starts, of course, in, in Barbie land, which is somewhat utopian, particularly for women. In Barbie land, Women have every amenity, every kind of dream house. They can do anything they want. And life is pretty convenient and beautiful. And Ken is there too, but he's sort of in the background. He's one of those amenities, really. This film, I said, has a light hand, but it looks at the hard issues. It looks at consumerism and domination systems, patriarchy, how we treat people who are different from us, our struggles for power, and our need to deny those things that cause suffering and death. In the beginning of the film, Barbie is at a fabulous dance party and after you've seen how she wakes up and everything is perfect in her world, she gets out of bed, her waffle pops out of the toaster, and then the whipped cream comes on top, and then a cherry, and she pours her milk, and she says hello to all the Barbies. They all greet each other saying, hi Barbie, hi Barbie. And then night comes and there's a dance party and they're all in this sort of very organized dance. They're wearing glitter and pink, the Kens are too. And all of a sudden, Barbie gets this look on her face, and she stops and she says, you guys ever think about dying? The record scratches, you know, that sound. Right? And everyone looks completely puzzled. And then there are crickets, just like there are here this morning. Complete silence. And then she just goes back to dancing. Like, obviously not a good question to ask in Barbie land. But that question begins to unfold 
a greater truth of abundant life in her own life. At first it doesn't look so good. She wakes up and she has bad breath. And then her shower, which actually doesn't have water coming out, is cold. And then her waffle pops out burned. Nothing seems to be going well, but the biggest downer is that her perfectly arched foot that fits into high heel pumps is flat. That sets her on a quest and she actually goes to the real world. And there she has lots of experiences. I'll leave it to you to see the movie or to remember the movie, but there's one that I want to highlight. She sits down on a bench and she sits down in her perfectly fuchsia tight cowgirl outfit with her white hat and she looks over to her right and she sees a very, very old woman. She sees this very old woman and you know, as the viewer, it's the first time she's ever seen an old person because in Barbie land, people don't age. She looks over, she smiles, she says, you are beautiful. And the woman without pausing says, I know it. You just know that this woman who in real life is 91 years old, you know that she has walked and lived an abundant life, which includes suffering and death and being in joy and beauty. You know that she's had all of that in order to say so quickly, I know it. You see, Peter couldn't possibly know the fullness of life that was going to come with walking with Jesus through suffering, mocking, persecution, death, Peter's own denial and failure, and then having Jesus raised from the dead. He didn't know what that was going to be like. And Jesus calls him Satan. That must have been so terrible for Peter. But remember, Jesus chooses that particular name to call Peter because Jesus knows that the world is going to try to choose convenience and ease and seduce Peter into the easy way out time and time again because that's what Satan did to Jesus back in the wilderness. Remember in the very beginning of this gospel, Jesus is out in the wilderness, in the real world, and he's hungry and thirsty, and he's alone. And it's Satan who, tapes, who, who tempts him and says, here, here is the easy way. Here is convenience. Take what I have to offer and you won't have to suffer anymore. There's a reason that Jesus calls Peter Satan. He doesn't want him to choose that way. He wants him to choose God's way. And God's way is messy and broken and beautiful and powerful and abundant. It leads us through suffering and death suffering and death of people for whom we need to show compassion. It leads us through our own suffering and our own death. And that's the paradox of life with Jesus and life in the church and life in relationship with people and with God. It is a life, death, life, death, life, death, life mystery and it is abundant. So today, the good news is that we are right there with Peter. Of course we fear death. We thank him today for saying what's, what's actually on all of our minds. And I leave you with this to imagine. 
One day, after life and death and life and death and life, imagine yourself sitting on a park bench. And maybe Peter's there. And Jesus. And all those whom we love but see no longer. And maybe we're all there. It's a really big bench. And maybe Peter looks over at you and says, it is a beautiful life. And you say, I know it. I know it. 